So when United have the ball in their defensive third and the opposition are looking to press them aggressively, man to man high up the pitch. Unlike last season with David De Gea in goal, with Andre Onana, United essentially now have an extra player during the build-up phase, giving them a four of Varane, Martinez and Casemiro inside of the box. This means that when one of the centre-backs has the ball on either side of the box, when the opposition player on that side moves out to close them down, the short pass to Onana is still open, which is a simple pass to make, but it allows United to open up passing lanes into players whose passing lanes were previously being cut off by the pressing players when the centre-backs had possession. And from here, Onana's ability to see and play these incisive line-breaking passes are up there with the likes of Edison and Ter Stegen, which we saw multiple times throughout Inter Milan's Champions League run last season. But before I go any further, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon podcast, which will be linked below. But also, if you want cheap, good quality football jerseys for the new season or retro jerseys from the past 40 years, then check out jerseyfever.com. A link will be in my Instagram bio. And if you use coupon code Atlantis, you should get a discount as well. I'll leave my Instagram at the top of the description and comment section, and a link will be in my Instagram bio. From here, Onana can completely bypass the frontline press with this forward pass into Casemiro. And from here, because the opposition's midfield and forward lines have pushed high up the pitch to apply pressure to United as they build out methodically, the consequence is, is that there's now a massive amount of space between the lines of the opposition's midfield and defence where the likes of Fernandes and Mount want to be receiving the ball. And so you can see how just by switching out De Gea for Onana, this doesn't just allow United to play out of pressure in their defensive third, but it also sets them up for those quick quick transition and attacks into spaces in the centre of the pitch that we have seen United fry from multiple times under Ten Hag. But let's look at another example of how Andre Onana can aid United in the build-up phase. Here we see that as opposed to the last example, the white team are looking to counteract United's Onana overload in the United box by committing more men forward to the press and pushing one of their central midfielders up onto Casemiro, but in doing so being prepared to leave Mason Mount free and behind in order to retain the vertical compactness of the pressing shape. As you can see here, as a ball goes into Onana, the pressure is applied immediately, and because there is now an extra player in the press, that pass to Casemiro to split the lines now becomes a lot harder, and also a lot more risky. With David De Gea in goal, United are probably forced to go long at some point, likely conceding possession, but with Onana's passing ability, if the opposition do look to push up and cut off all the short passing options, the Cameroonian can just clip a pass over the pressing lines into Mount or Fernandes in these kind of spaces behind the opposition's midfield. And just like that with one pass, Onana has taken six opposition players out of the game and now the back line has to engage Mount as he carries the ball forward into the opposition's half. Now when comparing Andre Onana with the other primary option that United were pursuing for the goalkeeping position, Porto's Diogo Costa, after watching both players for quite some time now, I would say that both are elite level ball playing keepers, comfortable in most situations with the ball at their feet, but I do think Onana's decision making when it comes to choosing the right pass is better most of the time, with Costa often attempting longer low probability passes in these positions, whereas Onana would be able to find a less eye catching line breaking pass into one of the midfielders which actually proves to be more effective. And from a playmaking point of view when it comes to playing out of pressure and finding the likes of Mount and Fernandes in those half spaces behind the opposition press, Onana is arguably already top 3 goalkeepers in the world at doing this. But what if the opposition decide to go ultra aggressive in their man to man press in order to nullify Onana's playmaking abilities? Well as we see here the opposition do decide to relinquish one of the defenders in the back line in order to commit more men forward to the press. But this means that with Rashford and Anthony retaining high and wide positions, along with the centre forward Martial in this example also retaining a high position, then now because the opposition has pushed a man forward from the back line, United now have a 3v3 on the halfway line. With David De Gea's long passing ability, this would likely lead to United being forced along with aimless clearances upfield. But with Andre Onana's incredible passing range, United can look to use a more direct route, and by having a centre forward drop off as Martial is doing on the tactics board, then this is going to drag the single centre back out of the back line, and this he wants Martial to become the free man in behind the midfield line. And so if the centre back does follow him, this opens up the opportunity for Anthony and Rashford to make those diagonal runs inside their full backs into the space vacated centrally, giving Andre Onana the option of releasing a direct through ball in the same fashion that we've seen Edison execute so perfectly before at City. And so having Onana in goal is a complete game changer for Ten Hag's build up strategy. If the opposition engages United high but doesn't go overly aggressive on the man to man press, then Onana can essentially become a playmaker as a free man in that deeper central position, and his passing ability and vision should allow United to play out more often than not. 
If the opposition use a more aggressive press, then Onana has a passing range to either clip a ball over the press to one of the free eights or full backs, or look to release the wide attackers in behind the high back line. And so opposition sides are no longer going to be simply able to force United into long balls up the pitch with a moderate amount of pressure in the defensive third. Either they sit off and allow United to create an overload, or they push up and risk leaving space in behind their midfield and defensive lines. But unlike most keepers, Onana isn't just a valuable asset in possession during the build-up phase in the defensive third, but also during settled possession in the middle third, as he can push way outside of his area, and because of his comfortability on the ball, United basically have an 11th outfield player who can play at the base of the possession system. We see here, for example, that if Onana stays inside of his box during settled possession, United would have to drop one of the central midfielders or one of the fullbacks to create a back three in that 3-2-5 shape, which gives United that wide base to circulate the ball from side to side. But if Onana pushes up, the two centre backs can split, and United can still use a wide back three with Onana sitting slightly deeper than the two centre backs. But now they have an extra player who can push higher up, either giving them an overload between the opposition's forward and midfield lines, or the opposition's defensive and midfield lines, potentially giving United a 3 2 5 1 shape during settled possession. And the advantage is obvious compared to having De Gea in goal, as with Onana in net, United literally have an extra player in possession. From here, Onana can shuttle across and provide a passing option for either of the two centre backs, and from here, act as a point at the base of the system where he has the time and space to utilise his passing range as a deeper line playmaker would. Able to progress the play forward with long switches of play to the opposite flank a lot more efficiently than if United had to switch play via shorter passes across the pitch. But also Onana can thread those riskier passes into players between the line. And so this puts the opposition in a dilemma. Do they push up and look to apply pressure to Onana to stop him being able to dictate play, but risk leaving space in behind for Mount and Fernandez and Co to be found by Onana's passes? Or do they instead sit off and close the space between the lines, but allow United to control the ball and slowly push them backwards into their defensive third? And these are the type of tactics tactical dilemmas that teams and managers are going to face when they play United, which certainly wasn't the case last season with De Gea. If Onana was instead to hold a deeper position inside or on the edge of the box, the pass backwards would be another 10 or 15 yards or so, which would allow the opposition to then squeeze up the pitch as the ball is going back to Onana, and even when the goalkeeper receives a ball, that threaded pass between the lines into someone like Mount, which we saw from the previous example, becomes a lot harder to pull off, not just because of the distance, but also the angle of where the pass is going. This then means that the centre backs have to drop to open up safer passing lanes, which causes the rest of the team to drop as you retreat into your own defensive third. I am also interested to see Onana's quick distribution as well, such as when he claims a cross, which is something he's much better at doing than David De Gea. And from here, his throwing or drop kicking could be used as a weapon to start counter attacks, with the idea being that Onana would claim the ball and immediately look for a long ball to release either Anthony or Rashford upfield, or maybe even a shorter throw into a player in the midfield if those runs aren't on. Now, we'll do some more analysis videos on Onana because it looks like there may be a long way until another sign in. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you do get notified when my video has come out. You can check the description for more videos as well, as well as a link to my Patreon where you can get full access to my podcast and a seven day free trial in the process. And of course, check out my Instagram where you'll find a link to jerseyfifa.com in my bio.